Hello dearies. Are you ready to make some noise? It's not fair, you know. You can hear me, but I can't hear you. From my perspective, you're silent. As you know, this is an education on menopause. And to my knowledge, it's the only one available to women that is down to earth, unbiased, and readily accessible. My goal is to ensure that you have all the tools you need in order to manage your menopause your way successfully. And today, we're going to discuss something that will definitely get in your way and prevent your success, no matter how you wish to manage your menopause. We'll be talking about silence. Silent patients, silent doctors, and silent diseases. And you'll discover that unlike the quote that claims, silence is golden, nothing could be farther from the truth in the world of menopause. So although I'm wearing a t-shirt that says, silence is golden, I don't agree with it at all. <laughs> now, don't expect to find this topic in my book, regardless of whether you have the first edition or the second edition. It's not there. This is just something I thought about and realized that it had great pertinence to menopause. So let's dissect this concept of silence a bit. You know, I come up with topics for these videos in the strangest of ways at times. <laughs> this one came about after reflecting on the fact that all three of the diseases that are due to estrogen deficiency are silent. And I find that stupid. It's bad enough that our mothers never bothered to mention a word about menopause, creating a situation in which most women don't even know what menopause is when it hits them over the head like a ton of bricks. And it's bad enough that women are in such denial about menopause that they either don't know about all the symptoms it produces or simply choose to ignore them. It's also bad enough that doctors don't equip you with the knowledge that there are diseases associated with estrogen deficiency. But to have three deadly diseases that all creep up on you silently is just super stupid. And that got me to thinking about silence in general. So here are my thoughts. When you came into the world as a newborn, you couldn't do much of anything. You had needs, but you had to depend on others to meet them. Your job was to make sure they knew you needed something. So even though you were completely incapable of doing anything for yourself, the one thing you could do quite well was cry. Crying was your only way of communicating. And boy, did it work to make everyone take care of you. If, as a newborn, you had remained silent when you had a need, there's no telling what disasters might have, might have befallen you. Silence could have resulted in your demise. Silence would have been stupid. Then, as you got a little older, you discovered that your own body had this way of communicating it and its needs to you. Pain indicated an injury. Hunger indicated the need to eat. Itching indicated an allergy. Aching indicated muscle soreness. Your body created a whole smorgasbord of sensations to let you know when something was wrong. So your body was not silent. It spoke up to let you know there was a problem. Silence would have been stupid. Those symptoms were your own body's way of speaking. And when you felt any of these sensations, you spoke up and told your parents about your symptoms. And the kind of symptom you described gave your caretakers a clue as to what the problem was. If you fell down and felt pain in your knee, you knew you had sustained a boo-boo. <laughs> you didn't just ignore it. You ran crying to your mom who washed it, put an antibiotic on it, and covered it with a band-aid. You never remained silent about any of your mishaps or injuries. 
That's why you've made it to your ripe old age now. <laughs> you spoke up loudly and clearly about all your bodily reactions. Staying silent would have been stupid. When puberty came along, you may not have talked about it much yourself, but everyone else did. And you certainly didn't find it necessary to keep anything about it a secret. Silence would have been stupid. You had no difficulty announcing the arrival of your first, first period. Your mom had probably already warned you of its inevitability, even though she probably failed to warn you about menopause. And you talked a lot about your periods over the next 30 years or so. You even talked quite a bit about PMS. All these things were your reality, so why hide them? Half of the world's population experienced them, so it just seemed stupid to be silent about them. And pregnancy, oh my goodness. Not only is there no silence about that, there's endless conversation about it. It's one of the biggest events of your life, so silence would be stupid. But you know, we humans are the strangest of creatures. Somewhere during the course of your life, you got the notion that you shouldn't speak up. For some odd reason, you decided that speaking up was a form of weakness. And odder still, you got the idea that suffering in silence was a form of martyrdom. You adopted phrases like, grin and bear it. No pain, no gain, and I can tough it out, etc., etc. They all implied that you should not acknowledge the signs and symptoms that your body provided to protect you. They implied that you should just ignore your body's way of speaking up to let you know that something was wrong. And you didn't just confine this tendency to remain silent to the, into the realm of your physical pain. You extrapolated it to your body's emotional and physical needs too. You even justified ignoring your needs by claiming that it was selfish to acknowledge them. You felt guilty if you paid attention to your body's cries for help. So not only did you ignore your physical pain indicating illness, you also ignored your need for personal time, self-care, privacy, etc. Even though you came into the world with the basic instinct to acknowledge and accommodate these things, you stifled them and decided that you preferred to remain silent. You misconstrued your silence as something that was smart and brave, but it wasn't. It was stupid and cowardly. You even went so far as to deny yourself your own interests. Instead of respecting yourself enough to honor your preferences and pleasures, you displaced yours for those of your family. In essence, you put yourself last. No matter that there was no way your life would fulfill your dreams in the face of all this silence, no matter that you would eventually resent your silence, no matter that deep down you knew your silence would not end well, you actually became quite good at staying silent. You probably thought this was especially skillful, but instead, it was simply stupid. And oddly enough, your own body adopted some of the same behaviors. Instead of every physical problem producing noticeable symptoms, you encountered some that snuck up on you in silence. Gone were the days when every boo-boo made its presence known. Some diseases were silent. They appeared and wreaked havoc without making a sound. Until it was too late. Of course, you got so good at ignoring your body that even if these diseases had produced signs and symptoms, you were too busy focusing on everyone else and listening to their cries for help to even notice your own. This finesse at ignoring your own body's screams for attention became a form of denial. And the denial became so entrenched that you denied the obvious even when it wasn't silent anymore. And once again, you probably 
probably mislabeled your denial with some term that made you feel heroic for ignoring things that were loudly and clearly obvious. But in reality, it was completely and profoundly stupid. And finally, you ended up here at the time of menopause. Mother Nature instilled your body with a whole host of symptoms to get your attention when you lose your estrogen at postmenopause. You have over 20 horrible symptoms that turn every aspect of your life upside down and make you absolutely miserable. But you ignore them and remain silent. There's an odd underlying fear about this whole thing. Because you feel so miserable, you start damaging your relationships. Your marriage becomes rocky and your kids avoid you. But you attribute that to them, not you. All because you're convinced that you really can ignore the effect that it's having on you. Your symptoms of menopause make you ineffective at work, but you don't dare speak up and tell your boss. You quit instead. You are so entrenched in your silence that you don't even wake up to the fact that all your symptoms are your body's way of hollering to alert you to the fact that estrogen is missing. Every cell in your body is starving. That's why you have symptoms from your head to your toes. But you're so good at staying silent that you just pretend everything's fine. And because you refuse to admit that you just might be experiencing menopause, you fail to get the education you need to manage it. You think your silence is stoic, but in reality, it's stupid. You don't speak up and tell your doctor that you're having over 20 miserable symptoms of menopause, and your doctor doesn't speak up and tell you what to expect. You both remain silent. The silence is just so stupid. Women who have no symptoms think they're lucky. What they don't know is that their body is experiencing the very same trauma. It's just doing so more silently. And that silence is deceiving. Because lurking beneath the symptoms, whether silent or not, are three deadly diseases. And they are all silent until they culminate in a catastrophic event. Silent, but deadly. You don't know that your heart arteries are clogging with plaque, your bones are disappearing, and your brain is shrinking. It's all happening without a sound. It used to be that you ignored your body's screams, but now, even if you wanted to listen, you would only hear silence. Stupid silence. Scary silence. Why? Why, oh why, are the deadly diseases for sil a silent topic like menopause silent? No matter how much you hate pain, no matter how much you hate admitting you have a problem, nothing is as bad as a deadly disease that is silent. The three horrible diseases of estrogen deficiency are made worse with silence. And whether you stay in denial or just stifle your symptoms or succumb to the silent diseases, all this silence is simply stupid. If you live as long as expected, your menopause will constitute the longest hormonal phase of your life. Are you willing to stay silent about it for half of your life? That much silence would just be stupid. And you have more control over the menopausal portion of your life than you do over any other time in your life. But you relinquish that control if you remain silent. Why would you do that? Ladies, please speak up. Talk about menopause to everybody. Communicate with your spouse so he knows what's happening. Teach your kids that this is inevitable. Be honest with your boss as to why you're struggling at work. Complain about your symptoms to your doctor. Refuse to grin and bear it. Demand relief from your misery. Don't settle for anything less. Make a lot of noise to get what you want for managing your menopause your way. Silence is stupid. Learn what I'm teaching you here at Menopause University by watching the videos in order. Discover that the three silent diseases are much more significant than the loud symptoms. I can tell you this. Until women demand more, they will not get more. Did you notice the picture on my t-shirt?
shows, along with the quote, silence is golden, women in bondage. Doesn't that make sense to you? Well, if you stay silent, you will remain in bondage. The only way you'll break out of bondage is to break the silence. So I hope this education gives you the courage to speak up and get what you deserve. You deserve an education on menopause so that you recognize it when it arrives. You deserve a doctor who honors your need for relief from your symptoms. You deserve a doctor who explains that estrogen deficiency is just like any other hormone deficiency. And it's just plain stupid for your doctor to scare you with the risks of taking HRT, but remain silent about the risks of not taking HRT. You deserve to avoid the three silent diseases of menopause. You deserve the right to speak loudly and clearly about your needs. Cry like a baby if necessary. It's the first thing you learn to do upon entry into this world. Don't stop. It served you well when you were a born, newborn, and it'll serve you well now. So speak up. Break the silence. Silence is stupid. So here's a list of all the stupid sources of silence in the world of menopause. Mother's failure to tell their daughters about menopause. Women's denial of menopause. Failure to acknowledge menopause as a hormone deficiency. Lack of education. Failure to focus on yourself. Failure to listen to your own body. Fear of menopause itself. Ignorance of menopausal symptoms. Martyrdom for suffering in silence. Embarrassment at work. Doctor's failure to discuss menopause. Doctor's failure to present risks of not taking HRT. And three silent deadly diseases. I know that this was not as educational as most of my tutorials, but sometimes you just have to put a complex problem into simple terms. And that's what I've tried to do here today. The bottom line is that one of the most prominent reasons that menopause is the most neglected topic on earth is because women are silent about it. Break the silence. If we don't, nobody will. I often say that I really want to start a menopause revolution, and this education is the first step toward that. It all starts with speaking up, because silence is really, really stupid. That's it. Short and sweet, but not silent. Next week, we'll begin to address the non-hormonal management options for the three big diseases of estrogen deficiency as a whole. Go to menopausetaylor.me if you want a consultation with me for anything at all. Go to Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to follow me. And stay here to subscribe, and I will see you in a week. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>